지금 다운로드 받으세요. We're still at the beginning of the day. This is only game number four of a potential 30 games that we have to play today. Yep. Just looking at the wins uh, road here for Hero, he defeated Rave, Scarlet, and Bomber. And um, Scarlet actually having a, her best run ever. The closest the foreigner has been to Code A. One game away from getting wow. into Code A uh, and like having that Star League run as well that she had was decent. Not as good as her Code A run, but anyway, she was beating other Protoss players. Couldn't beat Hero. So even though, yes, Hero did beat a foreigner to get into Star League, it's the best foreigner in the world potentially that we have. So keep that in mind. Yeah, her no regret doing a great job over here. Keeping the passion alive, still trying to get into code A, but uh, still, as always, very hard, or even harder than normal because all the Koreans, you know, coming back to Korea, forced to get into that one. But guys, we're going to jump into game number four right away here. It's going to be on Dust Towers, a PVZ between Hero and La Sierra. Target on my back, lone survivor last. They got me in the sights. No surrender, no trigger finger. Here we are on Dusk Towers, everybody's favorite map. This very macro-oriented two-player map. Down on the bottom left, it is Hero, the Protoss player from Siege Antis. And up to the top right, in blue, it is Lucira. The only Zerg in the group. And uh, this is not my favorite map, by the way. You were wrong. It's not everybody's favorite map. Yeah, so. uh, well, we see it a lot, so I just assume. <laughs> we're probably playing it, it like may be, 25 times today. So It may be every pro gamer's favorite map, but <laughs> everybody knows I don't play this game. I only cast it. Yeah. And, well, uh, it's not my favorite. I like Arena more. <laughs> We, uh, in our first group, Group A, we had, like, I think it was actually 20 games of Dust Towers, something like that. But uh, slowly, it's gotten less. Wow, you actually sneaked that in. Uh, nicely done. Uh, I'm going to actually count how many games of Dust Towers we have today. Okay, well, while you do that, I'm going to... Yeah, go ahead. I, I wanted to point out what's interesting about this game, which is kind of funny, is in our first two games that Lucera played versus his teammate, he was the one who hatch blocked. The Protoss, but in this game it was Hero who attempted to hatch block the mm. series. Like, no, I am the one who places the hatcheries. <laughs> you're gonna, <laughs> yeah. you're gonna fail to block my hatch. I'm pretty sure. No one could fail. Like, both times, uh, in fact, the, the games where Lucera played against Zest, uh, it was Zest who failed to block the hatcheries uh, that were on his side of the map. Mm. So, anyway, how many maps? Uh, we got 12 games of Dust Towers today, guys. Okay. Um, five in the first half and seven in the second half. And uh, because we do have teammates in this group, the first half is slightly longer, 16 games, and the second half is going to be 14. So uh, lots of dust towers being picked by Protosses. Super actually picking it a lot here. Um, as well as Zest picking it twice. Reality also picking that up. Uh, one time. Super picking it three times, actually, in the in the second half. So, really liking that map. So I'm pretty sure that this PPP here, um, first of all, it's three Ps instead of two, so that's already a warning. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Another uh, warning, he's going to be kicked out, actually, and just we're going to have to play a group of five people. But uh, I do want to point out that uh, it's possible that, you know, he, he could have just been trying to spam more pylons. He might be using original hotkey scheme, using the Brood War hotkeys to make pylons a P. <laughs> Probably not, but uh, yeah. I don't know. I'm just trying to like bring attention <laughs> away from the fact that we have a pause here. Um, maybe an easier way to do that would be to check out the fact that Hero has the goofiest pose we have ever seen on his uh, monitor portrait down there below his. Uh, what is he doing with his hand? What is that? <laughs> it looks like he's, he's trying to make like an origami bird with his hand or something. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know what he's doing. He it's, yeah. he's trying to do the Carmack. He's trying to do the Carmack pose. Uh, okay, hot, Hero's hotkeys is the problem. Yep, no problem. Uh, no, uh... Okay, so you, you got a small warning here. And, uh... Yeah, that's about it. He got a small warning because it was a hotkey issue for Hero, no surprise. Uh, that's just a, a very common Hero thing to do. Uh, to have problems with his hotkeys. Yep. It's, uh, something that we do see a lot of the time. Cybercore blocked. 
That's not going to be worth it, though, actually, with all these links he already made. He expected this. He didn't miss the cancel, right? Okay. I was like, we missed it on camera, but I just want to make sure he got it. <laughs> Saw the minerals, and I was like, well, that's not... I can't tell for sure. But yeah, he got it. Yeah. Probe's going home. Oh, or is he? Yeah, he's going home. It's fine. He's on his way. He does survive for now. Or is he actually? No, look. I mean, because the Lings have slightly more movement speed. If he makes any turns or doesn't go all the way, like, that probe could go down. I'm keeping an eye on him on the mini-map. The Adept is going to have to let him pass through. I hope he mineral walked. <laughs> I hope he mineral walked. I hope he did. <laughs> yeah. Phoenix well, is coming out see. meanwhile, but I'm just <laughs> pretty sure the probe gets home, but you never... More okay, concerned the Lings, about the life of the probe. The Lings stopped, so not only that, but the Adepts came down. I was pretty sure the probe was going to get out, but I wanted to hype it up a little bit more. You know. Yeah, it was pretty hype. I'm glad you did that. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't as hype as I wanted it to be, but it was like, you know, slight. Oh, oh, oh! He dies. Okay, see? This is what I'm talking about. You can never be sure. You can never <laughs> be sure, okay? No probe is safe. You you walk out past the, the natural, and you could die. You always have to be prepared for that possibility. Every probe knows. Yeah. It's in their programming. It's a rough life for the, the probes here on Dusk Towers, or any map for that matter, against uh, Zerg in particular. And uh, we're going to have a long, drawn out game here. Hero's going to take a third base. I don't think Losira can really commit to try to take that out. So he's kind of just going to mack her here on three bases. We'll see when he takes his fourth base and uh, how aggressive he does want to get there. And if Hero is going to try to shut that down eventually. But yep. uh, we are going to start off with some Phoenix Harass. Only with two Phoenixes, still finds two drones. He's going to peace out. Down goes the Roach Warren. And this is, oh, Burrow for a second. This happens every now and then. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like yeah. every now and then it's like, eh, nah. It's like they considered blocking the third base with the Ling or something, or fourth base, I guess, in this case. But it's almost always canceled. Or if you pull a horror and you do a burrow movement timing and totally flops. I mean, I guess that's the only time I can think of in recent times where you saw an early burrow not canceled. Yeah. Should have been canceled, though. <laughs> it's real. Oh, that Phoenix actually gets sniped there. Nice focus fire by Losira. He's got a lot of queens, actually, on the map, and he's grouping them up to try to snipe these Phoenixes. He's got five so far, queens. Yeah. Um, it's going up to, I believe, eight in total. That's the plan. Yeah, just Ooh, eight he's now. Making a, he's making a bunch of roots. I think he's just going to walk across the map. Here we go. Yeah, <laughs> queens are going. He's got a plan. He's going to execute it. Losira is just not... He's not ready to play straight-up macro games against Protoss. He's like, no, I'm not doing any of that crap. Look Here we go. Look at the army supplies. Like, he could actually break through if he gets enough Ravagers to make sure he can break the wall down. Yeah, and with eight queens, the Phoenixes are going to do nothing. And don't they, forget, they can't, they can't fight against eight queens. They're, uh, it's in the PTR. They're thinking about buffing the anti-air for the queens, yeah. too. Like, <laughs> like, well, maybe he's hoping that's going to happen. He wants to build a new play style. Maybe that happens and we just see this rush every single game. <laughs> this is just the new meta. Well, Hero's trying to get two Robos out to make enough Immortals to hold this. The Phoenixes need to be nowhere near those queens, though, right now with as many. Here's the Ravagers. Oh, boy. And Losira, man, he's bringing some new style uh, to this matchup in this group so far. He has to play against several Protosses, so I don't blame him. I don't know if this is going to work, to be honest. There's way too many pylons at the third base. And uh, already a bunch of units. Warp Gate research finished. But here we go. Let's see what he can do. He's going to force out some overcharges. Hero does not overcommit to the overcharges, by the way, only putting down one. Yeah, he doesn't have any creep for these queens, which is obviously going to make it very difficult for them to get in there and snipe structures or, you know, snipe phoenixes. But they're doing their job once they get close enough. Lings get into oh, the main, what? and that's because the wall is down here. Grossa Biles trying to hit that mothership core. He's sending some adepts back, already probe, four probes killed. But here's the here's the thing, he needs to survive against these roaches. Oh, the mothership core, and he doesn't, he acts, at least gets an overcharge down, but he loses that mothership core. He needs to hold on just long enough to get a few more warp ins here because it takes Losira a long time to reinforce with the army comp that he's building. He's basically only building lings because roaches take too long to get across the map. So if he survives a few more seconds here, he could definitely win this game. Queen's being lifted up by the Phoenixes now. One Immortal goes down. Oh, he's got a lot of Phoenixes at this point. Eight Phoenixes lifting up all the Queens here. So many transfuses, though. These gateways are starting to go down, and that means less reinforcing power for Hero. Losira trying to push in here. 
And only Stalkers and Phoenix is left over at this point, but it is going to be enough to hold on. There's just no reinforcing power here. Lair started at home. That's basically the stereotype in GG with his production tab. <laughs> Yeah, he's giving us a good look of exactly where he's at at this point, and uh, it's not a good spot. He's on 48 drones here. He's going to try to drone up, but eight Phoenix is coming across the map. Uh, there are three Queens, but that's not going to be enough when you're going up against eight Phoenixes. He needs to make spores right now, but a ton of damage can be done by these Phoenixes. There's so much energy built up, despite the fact that he was lifting on stop. Okay, this is a nice little run by here, but look at this. He just goes into the choke point. The Lynx can't get enough surface area to make this very worth it. Zealot block at the ramp, very well timed, and now these Lynx are actually going to be dead. They can't even get out of here, most likely. Um, Phoenix is not being controlled currently. I don't even want to watch this. I don't know why we're looking <laughs> at this. We just pretend like it didn't happen. Yeah. Hero just focusing back at home. But he holds with flying colors, and Lasira now down 24 supply as he struggles to catch up. Uh, his fourth base is going to be unbelievably late, and I think all that hero needs to do is make a bunch of gateways, get charge, and march across the map and kill him. If Lasira is GG first. There's no way that hero holds his fourth base. I mean, he's, he's or not hero, Lasira holds his fourth base. He's just so far behind at this point. The all-in did fail. And uh, you can see here what I was talking about. Tons of damage being done by these Phoenixes. He had to overcommit to, to uh, uh, Spores here to try to barely defend. Yeah, his Overlords are protected-ish. Um, he's got so many extra ones that it's not going to matter anytime soon. But 18 Hydras on the way. That's the one thing that here doesn't have the counter to yet, so to speak. But if you guys have been watching Legacy of the Void for a few months at least, you kind of probably already know that Immortals kind of counter Hydras in this game because you just press barrier, you make sure that's staggered correctly, and yeah. um, it's it's nasty. This Immortals is enough Hydras. Good, yeah. This is enough Hydras to push this away, though. He needs to be careful with his Phoenixes. And especially with the charge and how many gateways he's powering up at this point. He's got eight. Um, he's, he's kept alive that Warp Prism, too. He's not committing to the harass. Oh, wow, he's actually going to take a fourth base. He's going later here. Uh, he's. Uh, we've seen this a lot recently from the better players where they're like, no, I have a lead. Why would I attack? I yeah. don't need to attack. I, I can just make a fourth base and get a million miles ahead instead of just, you know, a couple hundred thousand. I think and, he wants uh, to... <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> I think um, he wants to get Storm out, basically just have the counter to these Hydras. One other thing he could do before Storm is ready, too, is use that Warp Prism he built to try to cancel the fourth base Lassira is making. He doesn't have the Warp Prism over there right now, but it absolutely could be nearby in case the Hydras try to attack before he does have that AoE damage. I think basically this is a one game for Hero unless he makes missteps. I think you put it best when you said he wants to be a million miles ahead, not just a couple hundred thousand. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's essentially like, you know, he's got a 90% chance of winning if he attacks right after that. But he wants a 100% chance. He wants a fourth base. He's he's Protoss on even bases on Dusk Towers against Zerg when the Zerg got so far behind with the all-in. And uh, he's just going to attack with all the tools instead of almost all. 32 Hydras. 33. Um, this is going to be one of those games where it's like, eventually we see Lurkers, and there's like 14 Immortals on the map and <laughs> 8 High Templar. It's going to, well, I mean, to, to put it simply, it's going to be a mid-game PvZ. But uh, yeah. it's not a good thing for the Zerg when he doesn't have any sort of advantage. And actually, it looks like we're not even going to be able to see Lurkers. He doesn't have a Lurker in yet. And this is just so much pros coming across the map already. Although those Zealots are all alone and the Hydras are having a field day with them at the top. Hero literally A-moved into this, okay? He, he literally A-moved into the best concave a Zerg could have. And he's so far behind that it just doesn't matter. Yeah, it doesn't matter. Or so far ahead, yeah. rather, that it just doesn't matter. Hero's going to push in here. Although, yep. like, more immortal, or more uh, Hydras coming out and a bunch of Lings. If he actually overextends here, he could end up losing more. Look at this. Well, well I mean, now's the time to fight, actually. Uh, he's... <laughs> I don't know, guys. I mean, that was not a good fight for a hero. Like you said, it was a 1A, but at the end, it was like a not even do anything fight. He wasn't even pressing A. <laughs> he was right-click moving, taking Hydra damage when he had yeah. the surround he could have grabbed there. Well, he's still ahead, but yeah, that was kind of gross. Not the best fight, for sure. And it's okay, because he's got a fourth base, right? It's possible that he does that before, and he loses the fight, and he's like, well, I'm on three base. I, I guess I struggle to take a fourth base. Oh, my God. Whoops. Well. <laughs> Lurker Den's on the way, guys. I mean, 
I don't think Lucera has any real, like, I mean, Lucera can't outplay Hero to win the game, but Hero can continue to make mistakes and Lucera can come back. I mean, this is starting to look like classic, uh, you know, PvZ from the beginning of Legacy of the Void. I think the Korean caster actually just said, like, I have nothing to say. <laughs> He's also like, wow, that was really just not the best fight. Um, yeah. Lucera is going to take a fifth base down here, not in the normal location. He wants to hide it a bit. And it's also going to be a good location to kind of pincer with his lurkers from. It's going to be kind of zone yeah. the pros off from doing a, a ground push towards that location. I mean, looking at this again, look at the army supply, look at the composition. Lurkers aren't ready yet. And this time he doesn't have, what was it, 42 Hydras. He's only got 18. And this time Storm is ready with High Templar. Like he had Storm last time, he didn't have High Templar with energy. Well, Sarah's doing everything he can. He's like, maybe I'll get two Zealots here, like the cost efficient trade, and I'll force him to turn around. He uh, needs Lurkers. Those well, are not Lurkers. Yeah, they're going for the counter attack. He's trying to grab the High Templar at the back because they're slower, and he knows Hero's basically just A moving across the map. But he's trying to force him to turn around so he can get enough Hydras out to get Lurkers. Wow, 26 Hydras on the way, but Hero is already hitting with this attack. He's going to let this base go. And remember, he has another base. I mean, I'm just trying to play Zephyl's advocate for Lucera here because this has not been the most uh, best played from a head game by Hero, if I could like, use really PC yeah, language. Yeah, I mean, this is definitely not the, the cleanest game we've ever seen. Storm going down. The Hydra's coming from two directions, from the front and from the back, but that's GG. not enough. GG. Hero taking the game as we expected, but making it a little bit interesting for us. Taking a bit longer to take that one. And that was Hero's home map, so not going to get any extra points here. But that's all right. Still taking that win. This is a great format. I wasn't sold on it when I first saw it. I was, like, reading it on a Korean website. And, oh yeah, like, just I was, like, my brain was, like, wait, what? It was two points and two maps, and this gives me a headache. But actually, now that, it, you know, we start to cast it and stuff, and this is the last group um, with this format mm -hmm. until next year, if we even have it next year. Yeah. Because um, we could just go back to brackets or whatever. But uh, I don't know. I like it a lot. It's it's definitely creating a lot of drama and yeah. I tension. Mean, especially that group with Trust and SOS going up against each other in the tiebreaker match. If you guys didn't watch, that was pretty epic. Uh, Trust going 5-0 in the first half and then 0-5 when he needed just six wins to make it through 100%, but he forced a tiebreaker because he lost five games in a row against all the same people that he won in the won against in the first yeah. in the first half rather which is just unbelievable for him it was just that elusive